Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the factors affecting the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, there are really three different things we can do, which I'm going to talk about just a moment, but this I just want to show you is the basic circuit symbol for a capacitor. These are the wires that lead up to the capacitor. These parallel lines represent the parallel plates of the capacitor. Sometimes you'll see one is curved, but more generally it's these two parallel lines. Now, just let's just say what is capacitance, since that's what we're talking about. What is effective? It's the, it's the ability of a system to store charge. That's what we use capacitors for. We use capacitors to store charge or to store energy, and that's what capacitance is. It's the ability of a system to store charge. Now, there's three things we can do to affect the capacitance. We can change the size of the plates. You say I made the plates bigger. We can change the distance of the plate separation. You say I made the separation bigger. Or we can leave the separation the size the same, and we can put a dielectric, some material, between those plates. And each of those things affects the capacitance of the capacitor. What about the area of the plates? Well, first of all, I just want to say the area of the plates is measured in meters squared. The capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the plates. Directly proportional, what does that mean? That means as the area of the plates increases, the capacitance increases. And as the area of the plates decreases, the capacitance also decreases. That should make sense. We're storing charge. The bigger the plates, the more charge you can store. The capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the plates. And what about the distance between the plates? Well, I just want to say, first of all, the distance between the plates is measured in meters. And the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. That means that as the distance increases, the capacitance decreases. And as the distance decreases, then the capacitance is going to increase. They are inversely proportional to each other. And that is because as the plates get closer together, then the charges on this plate have a greater effect because they're closer to the charges on this plate. As you separate the plates, the charges have less effect on each other because they're farther apart. Okay? So the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. Now, what about the last thing, which is the dielectric? First of all, I want to say that every dielectric material is represented by a dielectric constant. It's the physical property. It's a constant for that dielectric. And usually, the dielectric constant is given with the symbol K or abbreviated with the symbol K. If your not in America, or maybe you're in Europe, or you're looking at a different textbook, you might see it represented as epsilon r. But it's k in America, other places, epsilon r. But they both represent the dielectric constant. Okay, the dielectric constant describes the relative permittivity of the dielectric. It is the factor by which the dielectric increases the capacitance of the capacitor. If you have a material that has a dielectric constant of 2, then it doubles the capacitance of the capacitor. If it has a dielectric constant of 3, then it triples, and so on and so on. Okay, I like to think of it as the kind of describes how easy it is for the material in the dielectric to be polarized, because the greater that the material can be polarized, the greater effect it has on the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, And the capacitance is directly proportional, therefore, to K. As the dielectric constant increases, then the capacitance also increases. Now, some materials have dielectric constants great. Most materials have a dielectric constant greater than 1. A lot of times, especially when you're starting out, you'll see uh, problems with capacitors. And it'll say there's an air-filled gap or the air between the capacitors, the plates of the capacitor, because Air is kind of the base unit, so to speak, and that has a dielectric constant of 1. Other materials, such as glass and even water, have higher dielectric constants or dielectric constants greater than 1. Glass, depending on the glass, has type of glass has a dielectric constant around 7. Water, which is a polar molecule and can be easily polarized, has a dielectric constant of 80. Okay, That's kind of relatively high in general for most materials. All right, So that is a dielectric constant. 
and the material, the capacitance is directly proportional to the dielectric constant. Okay, now this is the, I just want to point out, this is the equation we use to calculate the capacitance of a capacitor. It's simply K, and then we have epsilon naught, or epsilon zero, which I'll talk about in just a second. We have the times the area of the plates divided by the distance between the plates. So it's the capacitance is equal to K times epsilon naught times A divided by D. C, as it says here, is the capacitance. K is the dielectric constant. A is the area of the plates. D is the distance between the plates. The area in meters squared, the distance in meters, and then this epsilon naught, this is the permittivity of free space. It is a constant that is used when you calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. It's a proportionality constant, and it is always 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared divided by newtons meter squared. Okay, sometimes you'll see different units because meters is a base unit, but newtons and coulombs are derived units, so the units can be expressed differently, but I think this is the most common units you'll see for the permittivity of free space, which is a constant of proportionality used to calculate the capacitance of a capacitor. Okay, so there you go. That's some general information about the three factors, the size of the plates, the plate separation, and the dielectric that affect the capacitance of the capacitor. And that's the equation we use for calculating the capacitance. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up for this video, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.